Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you one of the most valuable lessons that I learned from the great Les Paul. So that solo you just heard me play was Les Paul's solo from How High the Moon. If you wanna get the free notation and tab for that solo, I'll put that link down below. If you'd like a full lesson to that solo, including backing tracks, uh, note for note breakdown and analysis, and the harmony guitar part, I'll put that link down below also. Okay, let me give you a little context here. How High the Moon was recorded about 75 times and was never really a hit, mostly because people didn't really understand what the words were about. But it was really popular at jam sessions because everybody loved blowing over it. And most importantly, it was really popular with Mary Ford's sister, who was touring around with Les and Mary at the time, singing backgrounds. Um, so Les decides to do an arrangement of How High the Moon. And I think this was the first time that the tune was ever a hit. And he has this idea for an intro that sounds like this. Okay. Now, if you're playing a Les Paul and you have a cutaway, like all Les Pauls do, really, right? That's totally doable to play. But... Here's a little thing that people don't know. Les never used Les Pauls on Les Paul recordings. So none of the instrumental recordings, those 21 instrumentals that are part of New Sounds Volume 1 and 2, or any of the Les Paul and Mary Ford recordings have Les Pauls on them. Sure, he played them on TV. He took photos, uh, you know, promo photos with the Les Paul. Of course, he's trying to sell Les Pauls. He made $5 on every guitar sold. He's not an idiot. But what's on all the recordings is an Epiphone Zephyr that he called Clunker Number no. 1. And this was his favorite of the three Clunker guitars and the best sounding one. So Clunker Number no. 1 was an Epiphone Zephyr that was an archtop guitar and it was non-cutaway. So playing that intro on a non-cutaway guitar where the body kind of meets around the 14th fret is just kind of not possible. So now he's kind of forced to bail on this whole intro or find a way to make this happen. And what Les does on this intro, and it's also true for the solo that I played at the top of the video, is he tunes the entire guitar up a whole step. So E comes up to F sharp, A to B, D to E, G to A, B to C sharp, E to F sharp. Everything's up a whole step. Now if he plays where it looks like he's playing in G, it's going to sound in A. So now we could play the intro to How High the Moon and have it sound in the right key. Okay, I know this is annoying. You're probably thinking, I'm not gonna tune my guitar up a whole step just so I could play this intro that I could easily play in standard tuning. I have access to all those high frets on my guitar. You're absolutely right. There's you could totally play the intro, no problem in standard tuning. You're not going to be able to play the solo, though, because there's at least three places in the guitar solo that can't be played in standard tuning in the key of A. And one of these licks is a lick that influenced so many great players, and all these great players have put their twist on this lick, making it their own, not knowing that Les recorded it on a guitar tuned up a whole step. So players like Jimmy Page, Denny Gatton, Jeff Beck... Uh, Cliff Gallup, all have done some kind of approximation of this lick. Let me show it to you. So let me slow it down for you now. Remember in the key of A, everything sounds a whole step higher. So this is going to be C, this is going to be A, the root, and this is going to be F sharp, the six. So I'm starting on this C, 
And then I'm plucking the root, the A, and I'm gonna hammer on back to the C, pull off back to the A, and pull off one more time to the six, the F sharp. Next, I'm going to just change the top note and make that a two. And then I'll alternate between those two figures. That's the figure, it's pretty efficient. It's only like two pick strokes for each figure. Um, but what you're doing there is you're pulling off to the six. If I were to play this in standard tuning in the key of A, I would be up here, flat three, root. And when I pulled off to the open string, that would be E. It would sound as the five. Sounds fine, works in the chord, right? It's actually sounds like a, kind of a good lick. There's nothing really wrong with it. But the six is so much better as a color tone, especially when we're talking swing music and the music that's popular during this time. The six is such like a harmonic calling card of swing music and rockabilly. If you have a choice between targeting a five or a six, when you're doing a lick like this, the six is just the better choice. It's much more interesting. So pulling off to the six there, what players like say Jimmy Page did was hearing that it pulls off to the six or that it the last note of this figure is the six, but not realizing that less is tuned up a whole step. He had to play that six across the strings on the B string there. And then alternate to the two. And you hear Paige do a variation of this lick during the Heartbreaker solo, right? He kind of approximates that lick and then he moves it up a minor third. And I know I'm not playing exactly what he played, but I wanted to take Les's lick and move it around so you could kind of see what Jimmy Page was approximating with that lick. And that lick has become really part of his vocabulary, but it comes from Les and the fact that he had to change it because he didn't know how the original sound was being achieved kind of made it his own, right? So there's at least two other places in this solo where you need... Uh, to be tuned up. And I'll just point these out really quick. And then I really urge you to go grab the free notation and tab of the solo so you can go check it out. The backing track's in there. And if you want to check out the full lesson where I break this down note for note um, and analyze it for you, that I, I think there's a lot of great information there. Um, so in the middle of the solo, here's another spot over an A6 chord where you have to be in this tuning. <laughs> So he's playing the flat three and the six and getting this really raunchy kind of bluesy sound. But then you have this open string, which is, remember, tuned up a whole step. So that's an A. So you're getting the flat three and the six of A, the C and the F sharp. But then you're getting the root on the bottom. Now, if we were to do that in the key uh, or in standard tuning, and I'd be up here, there's, that would be my C sharp or C and F sharp but my open string would be the flat seven. Oh, sounds terrible, right? The other place that this happens in the solo where you have to be in this tuning is at the end with the harmonized kind of trilling lick. All these trilling licks are less imitating saxophone sections. A lot of Les Paul's arrangement style is him taking a lot of arrangement techniques for big band and applying them to guitar, so you could often hear him imitating a trombone section or a trumpet section or a sax section. So that last lick. So that lick there, it's over an E chord. And you're getting like a root, a six, and the nine of a chord. So over E, that sound is E, C sharp, F sharp would be the nine. So you get all these like great extensions. He's basically turning that five chord into a six, nine chord with his note choices. Again, really common um, colors with swing music. You hear a lot of six chords, a lot of six, nine chords. These are notes that you're commonly targeting when you play swing music. So for me, the lesson here is it's not about the gear that you have. It's not about having the most perfect tool for the job. What it's about is having a clear vision and having the willingness to chase that vision down and be flexible 
and tailor the tools that you do have to help achieve the sound that you have in your head. Where there's a will, there's a way. Les was not limited by the limitations of his guitar. He was not limited by the standard tuning. He made it work for him, right? So necessity is the mother of invention, all the cliches. Um, when you do this, you end up not just exercising creativity, but you also end up with something that sounds really unique. That's usually something you would never have come to if you had, say, that perfect guitar for the job or the perfect amp or pedal for the job. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and go check out my teaching website, The Inspired Guitarist, for courses, lessons, master classes, jam tracks, all that good stuff. And again, if you would like to get the free tabs for the How High the Moon solo, the link to that is down below, along with a link to a full lesson that includes a breakdown and analysis. Thanks for watching. <laughs>